Welcome back everybody. On deck today for review we're going over the Magpo Embus Pro front and rear sight that you see there. These are the new all steel ones from Magpo. Do a little bit more shooting here and uh, get into some of the pros and cons of them if you will coming up later on in the review. Time for a closer look here at the front sight. A few things you're going to notice right off the bat. Obviously they lock positively both down and up. You can see there if you fail to put it all the way up all you gotta do is tap it and it locks into place and it takes a good bit of pressure to get it down honestly I don't really know how to quantify it but I can tell you that just bumping it on your gear or something like that isn't gonna do it it kinda takes a deliberate effort same with putting it up but obviously as you can see there, there is some tension in there it's pretty tight and uh, pretty solid there's no wiggle either so if you try to wiggle it even halfway up or all the way up it stays rock solid obviously you'll notice some serrations there for uh, anti-glare properties as you're looking through the sights you're not going to get that glare coming back off if you're shooting on a sunny day. Here's what it looks like when it's removed from the rifle. I know one of the big things that a lot of folks were uh, talking about on the forums when these first were released was how are the uh, no tool adjustment uh, elevation settings going to work and will they be accidentally bumped. Well, I'm here to tell you I think that is highly, highly unlikely. Now, just to show you what kind of force it takes, you need to really grip on it as I'm doing right here. You can see my nails turning colors because I am grabbing that sucker so you got to grab it pretty hard I mean not so hard that you need uh, vice grips or anything like that but the odds of it ever being accidentally bumped are very very low in my opinion when I got my package in I was kind of surprised at just how small these are you can see here we have the gen 2 MBUS sites and here we have the new MBUS Pro um, much smaller uh, more compact design very sleek and um, really you're only, even with the all steel construction, you're only adding a little bit of weight. The front sight comes in at 1.5 ounces, so really not much more than your standard EMBA sight. Also when you have these folded down in your rifle, these are going to be a little bit slimmer than the old ones as well. I believe the max height of this sight at any time over the uh, rail that it's on is only 0.43 inches. Again, just like the rear sight, it engages positively both in the up position as well as in the down position and takes a little bit of force to do so. You can see positive clicks so that way you know it's in place when you put it up. You saw that the front sight had serrations cut into the surrounding areas of the front sight post. Well, here in the rear sight we have the serrations surrounding the rear aperture so that way again you're not going to get any glare as you're looking into it. Of note also is that it retains the knob adjustment for windage and again they're very positive engagements and it does take a little bit of force to do. I mean not a ton but again, enough that the odds of it actually moving without you intending it to move are very slim. Here's a quick size comparison for you with the um, Knight's Armament, Embus Pro, uh, Gen 2 Embus, and the old school uh, Ma Tech rear sight. As you just saw with those four sights that I had laid out there, it is a good bit smaller than the old uh, Gen 2 Embus polymer sights. But a big difference is when it's laid down. I believe the highest point when laid down above the uh, rail is only 0.37 inches. So very slim, very sleek design. As you would expect from Magpul, these are standard height sights. So but essentially this LaRue mount with this aim point is designed to give me a lower one-third co-witness with standard AR sights. And I didn't have to change a thing. It still gives you a lower one-third even with these on there. One thing you always want to mention whenever you're doing a review is cost, because obviously that's a factor, especially when you're talking about all steel backup sites. Now these come together uh, MSRP from Magful for about $190, that being $105 for the rear and $85 for the front. Most places you're going to be able to find them for about $10 to $15 less than that, all the big online retailers when they actually have them in stock. Um, so they are a premium product, no doubt about it. Um, and do you need them? Maybe. I mean, if you think you need them, if you want them, if you like and prefer all steel construction, then I mean, that's something you want to go for. Um, that said, I've had the Gen 2 uh, Embus polymer sights. I've never had a problem with them. I've ran them on guns for thousands and thousands of rounds. I accidentally dropped my guns and never had a problem. Um, and for those of you guys that have seen the gear selector, I believe it was, that did a um, drop test of a bunch of different sites. You guys saw the uh, Magpul uh, polymer sights came out very well in that drop test, so they're good sights. But a lot of guys just like steel, so it is what it is, and a lot of people just feel more comfortable with them. Now, compared to other steel sites out there on the market, that is a very reasonable price. I believe it's actually the lowest price compared to, like, the Troy or the Knight's Armament. I believe that is a lower price than those. So um, for what you're getting in terms of very quali high-quality product with Magpulse customer service behind it and R&D that you know they did on them, um, they're good sites. Um, 
another reason you might want them, especially the front sight, is that as you guys know, the polymer sights cannot be ran on a railed gas block the way you can, but not for too long because obviously they'll melt. So if you have a piston gun or any other AR with just a front uh, rail gas block, um, they are obviously a much better choice than getting the polymer one. So that upgrade may especially be worth it for you guys. Now, obviously, they're all steel. And one thing a lot of folks were upset about when they first came out and first were announced is that they're MIM. Um, I am not a metallurgist, as I said before, here on the channel, so um, don't I don't really want to go down that road, but they are MIM. Uh, a lot of people say that MIM can be stronger than forged, and but a lot of people say that MIM is garbage, so I'll leave that up to you guys, but just passing along what they are. That said, they're also melanite finished, and melaniting or nitrocarburizing, as a lot of you guys know, because I've talked about it before here as well, is a surface hardening treatment, so very durable. Uh, that, that melanite also is a corrosion resistant. Uh, treatment so very um, corrosion resistant if you're going to be out there in the elements walking around in the rain snow sleet uh, for you hunters out there you guys who are uh, law enforcement professionals military professionals that's something you want to look for obviously so it does have that going for it but all in all really I'm very pleased with them I mean they're a little bit more expensive but everything about them is nice they're low profile um, they work with any kind of IR type lasers and lights that you might be mounting on your rails as well due to that low profile um, just an excellent option out there for those of you guys looking for all steel construction. Um, as always guys though, if you have any questions about this review, anything else I can cover here on this channel, feel free to post below in the comment section. I do try to answer those. If you don't have a YouTube account, you can always post over on my Facebook page. But uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. <laughs>